What's going on everybody? King of Dragons 5000 here coming at you with another figure review. Today we'll be having a look at the Mattel DC Comics Multiverse Wonder Woman movies figure Diana of Themyscira. Now here we do have Wonder Woman or Diana of Themyscira in the packaging. You can see she does come with her golden lasso of truth, her sword, and then her Build-A-Figure piece of Ares, the God of War. Can't wait to get this girl opened up. On the front we do have this really beautiful image of Wonder Woman. On the side we have a little bio. It says, before she was Wonder Woman, she was Diana, princess of the Amazons, trained on a remote island as a warrior. Flipping it around on the back with no real bio for her besides the one on the side. We do have a look at other figures of the line. We have Wonder Woman, Steve Trevor, Diane of Themyscira, Queen Hippolyta, and all four figures come together make the Billa figure Ares, the God of War. Really looking forward to completing Ares. What we're going to do now is take a little break, get this girl that open up, and then we'll go on to the rest of her review. So sit tight, everyone. And so here we have Diana Prince out of the packaging, and before we get on to her, let's actually show off her build a figure piece of Ares. She does come with the lower torso of Ares, and you can see, really looking forward to how Ares is going to look. Uh, there is some nice detail in his outfit, and really want to finish this guy, so hopefully, fingers crossed, we get all the figures for Ares. But anyway, here we do have Diana of Themyscira out of the packaging, and I'm going to say this, a pretty okay figure. There are some things I have wrong with it, and there's one glaring issue that I need to bring up, and that's the fact that when we saw a prototype of this figure, they actually omitted articulation on her. When we when Mattel showed off the prototype figure of Diana of Themyscira, she actually had a mid-torso crunch. Like she had a ball, what appeared to be a ball joint right here underneath her chest, and that would have given her an ab crunch and some extra articulation. But on the final figure... They've actually omitted that, which is really disappointing. I don't like to see when companies omit articulation, because it does. It means the figure is going to be less poseable. And let's actually go on to her accessories really fast. She does come with two. She does come with this sword. Now, if you're wondering if it's the same sword as we saw with the Wonder Woman, it's not. Here's Diana Themyscira's sword, and here's Wonder Woman's sword. Though they do look similar, I kind of like the design of this one a little more. If they had gone with the same gold plastic they did at the handles, and then given this blade over here, I probably would like it a little more. This one, her, the Wonder Woman blade seems to be more of a silver than this one, if that makes any sense. But it does fit in either of her hands, although getting it into her hand isn't the easiest. You do kind of have to stretch the plastic out to get it to fit in her hands. And stretching the plastic is always a bad idea. And then she also does come with the magic lasso, which fits in either of her hand. But again, had to stretch out the plastic for her sword so it doesn't fit in her right hand anymore. Which is a shame, but it happens. The only problem I have with the lasso is that there's no way to attach it to the figure. Like, there's, she actually has no weapon storage for any of her accessories, so that is a little bit of a letdown, but let's actually show off the detail on the sword really fast. You can see there's a lot of detail on this sword, and they did a really good job sculpting it. And what probably the biggest thing I like most about it is there is no Made in China logo on it or watermark anywhere on it. So that's a huge bonus that we get a sword that doesn't say China on it. Moving the camera back out. So liking her accessories, just kind of wish she had some storage for them in case you didn't want to have her pose with them on. And speaking of Wonder Woman really fast, let's actually get her pose right here and bring out the Wonder Woman figure and as you can see they both look like really nice figures I kinda like the head sculpt on this figure more the Diana of Themyscira looks more like Gal Gadot than the Wonder Woman sculpt not saying that this was a bad thing but this one kind of has a better face 
And speaking of better faces, let's actually sh show off how much better it is. We can get a zoom in on the face. Give the camera a little bit of time to focus. And that is a really beautiful face sculpt. Mattel is getting better at making these head sculpts. And you can obviously tell that that's Gal Gadot. It's like the Wonder Woman figures just kept getting better and better. So I'm really liking that. Now, this brings up, bring me to my, probably the biggest complaint I have about this figure. If you notice, her skin tone on her body does not match any part of her skin. The reason for that is when they molded her torso, it's molded in this color plastic, then painted flesh tone. I honestly think Mattel should have gone with the flesh tone colored plastic, then painted this, because... This, it's really obvious to tell there is some discoloration between her torso and her arms. Uh, it's really jarring and I had some knock against the figure. I can't say it's not noticeable because it is pretty noticeable. But the detail on her outfit is actually really nice. You can see all the little fabric details on it. You can see the little indentations on the gold. We do get some wash right here on her skirt piece. Although it is a kind of dense rubber, so we really don't get too much movement out from her thighs. That's about all her legs will do, and we'll get more into that when we go into her articulation. Her sandals are done really nicely, and then we get to her feet. She has no toes. I don't know what Mattel was thinking, but Wonder Woman has no toes. I know they're supposed to be sandals, and they could have at least sculpted the toes onto her. Like, that's... It's it's a nice figure. They just did a lot of things wrong, and it is a shame because I really wanted to like this figure. A few things in the right direction, but then we also take a few steps back, so... That is unfortunate. Moving on to her articulation, we do have a ball joint in head which looks up, down, left and right. We do get some side-to-side -side movement. Arms on a ball joint go out to about that far. They do a full 360. She spins at the bicep, single jointed at the elbow, and we get some elbow swivel there. I actually was not expecting that. I kind of just took a gamble because the Wonder Woman figure had the swivel here. But Diana of Themyscira also has an elbow swivel. She can spin at the wrist. No ab crunch, which is unfortunate. I really wanted her to have that ab crunch. She does swivel at the waist. Legs go forward about that far. Back about that far. This leg does go further a little more because of the cut in her skirt, but back not so much. And then out. That's all we got. So a little unfortunate, but it is what it is. Thigh swivel. Single jointed in the knee. And does appear she has a swivel right here at the knee, but it's pre pretty much useless because it's sculpted as one piece, so I don't know. But single bend in the knee, and then we also do get an ankle hinge, which works pretty good. Not the best, but okay. So that's Diana for you. What we're going to do now is take a little break, get a pose for my final thoughts, then we'll wrap up this review. So sit tight, everyone. And so here we have Diana of Themyscira pose for my final thoughts overall. A really decent figure. They could have done so much more if the body was the right color. If they had kept that torso articulation, that would have been nice. Maybe if the skirt was a lighter plastic, it, we'd get a more poseable figure. But as far as posability goes, you're not going to be able to do much with her, which is kind of a bad thing. But she is still a nice looking figure. Now, I was lucky enough to find Diana Thermoscara, Wonder Woman, and Steve Trevor wasn't able to find Queen Hippolyta. Hopefully I can find her so that I can bring her and Ares to you, but until I find you guys, hope you guys have enjoyed this review. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, tell me what you think of Diana Thermoscara. As always, check out all my other action figure reviews, all my DC Multiverse figures are also up. So if you're looking for the other Wonder Woman figures, they'll be here too. And until next time, guys, I'm King of Dragons 5000, and I'll see you later. Take care, everyone. My dreams are nightmares. How can I sleep?
got the 